Tencent, owning stakes in more than 600 companies, to building a business that revolves around copying other tech giants' ideas and blocking TikTok content which they do not feel suitable for the audience. These actions are not part of the state or federal government of a country, but are actions that are taken by one giant company. A company that has now become so big that its authority is in the form of stake. In almost every company we know can bring down the entire world economy with a snap like Thanos. Because from a distance, this organization calls itself a technology and entertainment company. But if you look closer, this bad boy secretly wants to take over the world. In other words, think of the products of the companies that you use. You drive Tesla, it owns a stake in it. You play Fortnite, it owns a stake in it. You love L'Oreal products, it owns a stake in it. You love Udemy courses, it owns a stake in it. You use Snapchat, it owns a stake in it. You love music, it owns a stake in Spotify and Universal Music Group. They control over 15% of the global gaming market share and over 51% of the Chinese gaming market and is the most profitable company in gaming. More profitable than companies like Sony, Apple, Nintendo, EA, Google, and much more. Now, we can go on and on with this evil objective of grabbing a piece of cake in successful companies, but what we must really find out is the actual vision of Pony Ma. There is no doubt why Pony Ma was declared one of the most powerful people in the world in 2018. But with every sip of power he drank, an honest company was forced to give up on its vision. In an interview, Pony Ma himself said, to copy is not evil. And the founder of Puindodo said, Tencent won't die when Puindodo dies, because it has tens of thousands of sons. So let's dive deep into Tencent's enormous success of trillion dollar valuation and find out why it loves following anti-competitive practices. So, after completing a Bachelor of Science in Computer and applying to engineering from Shenzhen University in 1993, Ma started working at China Motion Telecom Development Company that focused on providing telecommunication services and products. As Ma was in charge of developing software for pagers, he was only paid $176 per month through which he could barely take care of his expenses. However, a breakthrough in his life was witnessed when he started working at Shenzhen Wunshan Communications Company, where he learned about the emerging market of internet calling services. It was the same period when Israeli company Mirabilis launched the world's first internet instant messaging service called ICQ in 1996. Luckily, Ma participated in the presentation for ICQ, and soon he got enormously inspired by this powerful idea. ICQ was like an old version of present-day WhatsApp, but was powerful enough to spread like fire worldwide. To grab this opportunity, Ma, after getting back from the presentation, contacted four of his college friends, and in 1998, Tencent was founded. Within one year of its launch, Ma and his team invested each day in creating the first product of their business, and in February of 1999, they created a Chinese version of ICQ and called it open ICQ. Now, despite 90% of the features being copied from the Israeli company, open ICQ managed to gather more than a million registered users by the end of the same year of its launch. However, before they could celebrate their success, they were hit by a powerful lawsuit by the American online company that bought ICQ from Mirabilis in 1998. In the court, American Online argued that Tencent's domain name OICQ.com and OICQ.net are in complete violation of ICQ's trademark and thus violate their intellectual property rights. Despite Tencent trying its best to defend its domains, Ma lost the case and was forced to give up on both domains. Although they were badly hit by losing 90% of their followers, in December 2000, they decided to change the name of Open ICQ to QQ. Within the first three years, they failed to make sufficient profit. Due to this, Ma also turned to U.S. investment firm IDC and Hong Kong's telephone company Pacific Century Cyber Works for some financial support. During the negotiation, Ma was forced to sell 40% of his shares for $2.2 million. To get their company back on track, Tencent improved the QQ platform by allowing users to send messages directly to mobile handsets. With this major update, Tencent, in 2004, became the largest Chinese instant messaging service by controlling 74% of the market. The company drew the majority of its income from advertising in the QQ platform, 
and charging fees from premium customers to access extra features. This eventually helped Tencent list the company on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and quickly made Ma one of the richest people in China's telecom industry. A few years later, he also established a super app called WeChat in 2011, which consisted of all-in-one features like instant messaging, social media, mobile payments, a news feed, video conferencing, and even allowing users to play video games. WeChat became an instant success, and today, it has over 1.26 billion active users that contribute enormously towards Tencent's revenue. Now, becoming rich was not enough for Ma. He wanted to ensure that instead of making his company live for a few decades, it should survive for centuries. And after selling his 40% shares to investment firm IDC and Pacific Century Cyberworks, Ma realized a lesson he could never forget, which was owning a stake in other valuable companies instead of working hard to create your own products. With all the money in hand, Ma changed his strategy from copying other companies to owning a stake in their organization. Moreover, his strategy also protected Tencent's earlier reputation of copying others and profiting from their intellectual property. From 2011 to 2014, Tencent went on a shopping spree like there was a flea market of companies selling their stakes. In 2011, Tencent began its shopping by acquiring a 92% stake in Riot Games, which is the developer of the famous online game League of Legends. The reason why Ma chose games as a good investment is that the market size of online gamers was increasing at a faster pace. And by 2026, it is going to reach an enormous $321 billion market. So after noticing the gaming industry as a good bet, Ma in June of 2012 bought a minority stake in American video game company Epic Games, which is the creator of Fortnite. Then in March 2014, Tencent acquired a 28% stake in South Korea's CJ Games. And this was not all. Ma understood the game of ownership stake in other companies and now he wanted to lay his hands in every corner of the world. So he started focusing on other industries. In March of 2017, Tencent purchased a 5% stake in Tesla for $1.78 billion. Within a few months, in November of 2017, Tencent acquired a 12% stake in Snap Inc., the creator of Snapchat. Again, after just two months, in January of 2018, Tencent collaborated with Denmark-based The Lego Group, which is the world's largest toy company, to create online games and social networks for children. So, with all its aggressive style of acquiring a stake in other companies and using it to its own advantage, Tencent seems to be focused more on what others are creating instead of innovating its own unique products. The same point was also argued by Alibaba founder Jack Ma. He said, The problem with Tencent is the lack of innovation. All their products are copies. To give clear examples, Tencent created QQ Farm, which was a direct copy of Happy Farm. It created QQ Dance, which was a direct copy of Korea-based Audition Online. Tencent also created QQ Speed, which was also a direct copy of Korea-based Crazy Racing Kart Rider. Although the company did manage to mark its place in the world's top 10 most valuable companies in 2017, what matters the most is the effect you are trying to create in society with your products. Surprisingly, Tencent is more determined in creating its own country and its own government rather than compete in a market with its own skills. Because in 2018, Tencent's WeChat platform blocked TikTok videos and other content that are politically sensitive. For this, TikTok sued Tencent for spreading false information on its platform and creating unfair competition in the market. Lastly, in December of 2019, the Chinese government also ordered Tencent to improve its user data rules for its apps concerning censorship rules. While speaking about censorship at a tech conference in Singapore, Ma said, In terms of information security management, online companies from any country must abide by a defined set of criteria and act responsibly. Otherwise, it would lead to hearsay, libel, and arguments among citizens and between countries. That's why the need for online management is increasingly urgent. So, what do you think about Tencent's monopolistic approach? Do you think its approach of copying its competitors or investing in other products is healthy for the tech industry? Tell us in the comment section below. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to mention them in the comment section. We'll surely respond to your request. 
don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the like button if you like this video.